Hello, and welcome to Stress Less with me, Jess. Today, my special guest is Laura Rotter. Hello, Laura. Hello, Jess. So happy to be here. Same, same, same. Well, I was on your podcast. Now you get to be on mine. So <laughs> let, let's do this. So you are the owner of True Abundance Advisors. So basically, you are a heart-centered financial advisor. So you are trying to do bring in that the people that are oh my goodness, challenge with money, but you're taking all that stress away and you're going to help them out. That is a very simplified, simplified way to describe you. But tell us everybody why you're so amazing. Um, thank you for that introduction, Jess. I started True Abundance Advisors in 2016. Um, I think we teach what we need to learn. I had a very lucrative career for close to 30 years on Wall Street. And by the end of my career, I'd have to say even perhaps the last 10 years, I wasn't particularly happy. But I had a big house and I had a vacation home and I took fancy vacations and three kids that were going to go to college and I became trapped by my possessions. And it was only through well, both mindfulness work, which I'm happy to talk about during our conversation, but also the nuts and bolts of like, these are my expenses. Let's sell the big house. Let's sell the vacation home. Um, really understanding, organizing, getting clarity around my expenses, which helped me make different choices in my life so that I could start this business to help others in similar positions that, you know, wake up one day and say, I'm miserable, but how do I right size my life financially? And how do I use my resources to create a life I love? Um, I've said that I was using my life to make money. And now I use my money to make a life. Oh, I like that. As you're talking, I've been writing down like all your pointers and I'm going, that's my favorite one. That's my favorite one. <laughs> I like that one too. I like that one. <laughs> but you said so many things. I think one of the biggest things is, especially as business owners, especially as someone that's struggling financially, we think that money is going to solve that problem. And it's not. Does money help certain things? We can't describe that for sure. Does money help certain things about in our life? Obviously, but it's not the all and be all. And so how do you live that life? And I think that's exactly what you're saying is that you had quote unquote it all, right? You had the house, you had the vacations, you had the life but there's still something missing and how you're trying to find that life and find that balance. And I think that's, that's awesome. Exactly. I mean, yeah. as you know, we spend most of our lives working and if you're not happy with what you're doing during the day, if you're sort of just trying to make it to the weekend, which was what my life had become, then there's something wrong. And I think you also don't get to appreciate what you're doing, right? So you maybe not that you didn't appreciate your house and vacations, but maybe you get to see them in a different light when you're at a happier spot in your life, right? Yes. Right. So, so true. So tell us a little bit about your business and tell us a little bit about what your clients do, the, the work that you do with them. Tell us a little bit about that. So um, I work primarily with women. I often say, I, you know, I, I was with dudes on a trading desk for many, many years. How do you like them, Nick's? I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> um, and I I guess a, a quick aside, I did a yoga teacher training while I was still working on Wall Street. And I was struck by um, general um, generalizing that women really were willing to be vulnerable with each other in a way that like, if I had to give a speech in, couple, in front of a couple of hundred people on Wall Street, I couldn't say, oh, I'm a little bit anxious about it. Like nobody would share their thoughts. In the yoga teacher training, we had to teach each other and the teachers, and there was a sharing of, oh, I'm a little anxious. So I'm, and that was amazing to me. And so I'm really attracted to working with women. I'm so often struck by how many women are so bright. And when it comes to money and numbers, oh, I don't understand it. There's this feeling of deficiency, like there's something wrong with us that we don't know how Wall Street works or we don't, you know, understand our budget. And so I really like to work with women primarily in a life transition. And this can be losing a career, heading towards retirement, getting divorced, um, losing a spouse. 
it's often in times of life transition that you're like, okay, I'm going to speak to a complete stranger about my money. I mean, it's, it's not often, that's not such a comfortable thing to do. And to me, it's really important to understand the emotions around money. So a lot of the work I do, I mean, of course they're tied. You need to understand the numbers, what's coming in, what's going out, what are you saving? And, and you also need to understand your money story. Like, did you grow up with a real sense of scarcity? And then no matter how much money you have in the bank, you're never going to feel like it's enough. Or the other way around, do you just take money for granted and you actually need to look and see, you know, maybe you're spending a little bit too much. So I really weave both the, the emotional aspects of money with the nuts and bolts of, of money. What do you feel is like the most common reason women don't understand or in tune with their money? I mean, a couple of things come up for me. I've met with women who, you know, grew up with brothers. And so if there was any discussion about, you know, money in the house, it was often with the brothers. And so the implicit message is you're not going to understand this or this isn't something you know, you can do, it's both money and math. I mean, it's the same thing that I've, um, a lot of women just feel uncomfortable with math. So, you know, that's not my domain. And I'm talking about just couples where the women could be the primary breadwinner, but still when it comes to the actual money, oh, my husband takes care of that. And part of that is also, there's, a delegation of effort, right? You know, my job is X, his job is Y. And so when I meet with couples, it's not, you know, somebody's doing the money. It's not both people doing the money. And that also could be because we don't like to talk about money. So the last thing you want to do is say, oh, I'm going to sit with my husband and talk about, you know, what we're spending. That doesn't seem like a very romantic thing to do. Um, Kills the fire. <laughs> And, and I guess finally, when I started this business, I really thought that people are going to come to me with questions like, I just got an inheritance or again, I have this life transition. What should I do? How should I invest? And I'm creating a safe space for conversations about, you know, if you found out you had one year left to live, what would you change? Um, if, you know, these aren't questions I came up with a gentleman, George Kinder, um, he's known as sort of the father of financial life planning. You know, another question, like if tomorrow you find out is your last day, what would you regret? And really understanding what it is that we want, not what it is that, you know, BMW tells us that we want or some other cultural message, but really deep down inside what's important to us and what's important to me is not going to be what's important to you. Wow. And so just creating a space to even talk about these kind of things, which we don't generally have, and we don't generally do. So I sort of see that as my mission. I love that so much. Cause I think what you're doing is creating a healthy relationship with money, you know, in, in the sense of, you know, showing that respect and letting it work for you, all these things that we hear, but I feel you're breaking it down to let me teach you exactly why we say those terms. And let me teach you why it's important for you to understand what's coming and going in your own money. Not like you said, so I get the BMW and I pay this off and I get like this grand luxuries purse and things like that. But just so you get to be at that happy spot because you're able to, and you want that for your client. Exactly. And I know you're a, a stressless practitioner. A part of it is not to beat up on ourselves if we can't get to that happy place, but to, to make space for all the feelings to say, you know, sweetheart, it's okay that you feel anxious around money. It's not surprising. You grew up where your parents had to choose which bill to pay each week and to understand where these emotions come from and when you understand them and accept them, it's easier to move forward. If we reject them, that doesn't help. No, I think we we, we all should know by now that hiding and stuffing feelings and thoughts don't really get us anywhere. Right. Beating up on ourselves for having certain feelings and thoughts is not helpful. No, no. So for the woman that's in that life transition, and she goes, Laura is saying all the right things. What is the best way for them to contact you? So um, 
my email address. So first of all, the name of my firm, again, is True Abundance Advisors. And why did I choose that name? In recognition of the fact that, of course, money is a scarce resource, but so is time and so is energy. And we need balance. Um, balance is a fraught word, but we need some balance of all three in order to feel truly abundant. So that's how I name my firm. So my website is True Abundance Advisors with an O. And my email address is Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at trueabundanceadvisors.com. And I have on that website um, a workbook um, that I offer as a resource um, to unblock your money block. So it really is what we've been ta talking about, understanding the money messages we've grown up with that may be blocking your ability to create true abundance in your life. And that link is also going to be shown in any show notes that you find, whether it's on social media, whether it's on the podcast app, that link will be provided for you there as well. Laura, what is one way your business brings you stress? Oh my. Well, I, talking about scarcity, um, I try to analyze this in myself. I have a lot of feelings of time scarcity. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's my practice to recognize it, not beat up on myself for it. But I'm always sort of aware that, like, oh, I'm running late to this. And I'm, and as a solopreneur, I'm, you know, I wear all the hats. I'm, I'm the marketing hat. I'm, you know, meeting with clients. I'm preparing for meetings. I'm on podcasts, you know, there's, and there's just so many hours in a day. And I guess I want to be sure to share um, some of my practices because I do attribute finding meditation and yoga to having to making the decision to leave Wall Street, which will be a decade, the end of this November. So congrats. Um, because it always sounds so trite, but I realized that I was choosing to be a victim of my life. You know, oh, I can't leave Wall Street. I'm the primary breadwinner. We've got this house. We're sending kids to college. And and realizing that that was a choice I was making to feel that I was trapped and that I could choose otherwise and um, that I'm not going to get a do-over of my life. And again, that always sounds like, of course you're not, but I think we live our lives and we don't realize that, you know, we have a limited amount of time on this planet and to spend it miserable and rushing around. And so as a practice, I do meditate 20 minutes every morning, at least during the week. On the weekends, I sleep later and I don't. Um, well, balance. <laughs> and I'm also a relatively type A personality. So I do exercise every day. I'm pretty, um, I'm, pr I'm a pretty disciplined person. And so my practice is really to become a little bit less disciplined. <laughs> oh, I like that. No, Let that's slow more. Yes. Well, it's kind of like going back to what you were saying in the beginning, like just creating that awareness, knowing that we all have something that we're working on and there's nothing wrong with that, but keep growing. And so knowing this is your next step of growth. And that's so cool for you. Cause like you said, you're wearing all the hats, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're, you're doing all the things now that's a business owner. So then it's like, you said it there, that's the marketing, that's the planner, that's the podcaster, that's the, right. That's everything in between. And so then it's like, how do I just make time just to go? It's okay. It's, it's okay. Right. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love that. To recognize that it changes, right? I started this business 10 years ago. I was just having a conversation with the coach today. And what my goals were 10 years ago, by necessity, I should have different goals now. I'm 10 years older. You know, life has changed. And yet it's so hard to let go of that old person and those old goals. And yes. again, first step is recognizing. First step, first step. And that's a hard step. And then it's the next action step too, right? You talked about the action steps too, but also you're saying too, 10 years ago, isn't that long? If you think about everything you've done before. And so just knowing in 10 years, it's okay to grow and change. Think about what the next 10 years look like in the next five years, right? And talk about that time. 
that growth within a time, that learning within a time, right? There, there's so many things that happen within 10 years and you know, that's a whole other podcast within itself <laughs> <laughs> because we all be like, wait, I just know what happened in the last two years, you know, but just knowing what you need now and there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, very, very yeah. true. It's oh. important to hear us say it. Yes. Laura, before we get into the lightning round, we talked about, you know, your business, who you help, all the things in the in between. What is the one thing you want the listeners to take away from today's episode? I guess, um, again, teaching what I need to learn. Life is a journey. So there isn't this idea, oh, I'm going to come work with Laura and then, um, you know, everything will be set. As a matter of fact, one of the things I like to say when I put together a financial plan for someone is, you see this plan we're discussing, it's immediately obsolete. Because the one thing we know for sure is that life is about change. And and that's why I do think it's important to work with a financial professional, not just on one time, because you want someone who knows who you are, what your goals are, what your resources are, when the inevitable crap happens. I mean, I'm, you know, unfortunately things happen in life. And when you're facing something like that, some unexpected event or change is not when you want to start getting to know someone and getting to understand your resources. You want someone you can pick up the phone to and immediately yeah. they know what to do. And I'm thinking in particular of a client who unexpectedly um, lost her husband this year and how thankful she was that we had this relationship that I had introduced her to an estate planning attorney and an insurer, you know, that all these pieces were in place and all she needed to do, you know, was to call me and, you know, we were already getting things done. And so really almost as much brought home to me how important having these relationships in place beforehand Yes. And I think to your point too, you also just mentioned that you, you have relationships for resources, right? So you're not just the financial planner. You're going, okay, that's great. Now, the next thing that you need is X, Y, Z. Here are some people to help you. And I think that just goes back to you, that wellness and that mindfulness piece that you were talking about earlier is that you're doing the full circle. You're not just doing one piece of narrow focus. You're realizing how important everything is and to have those connections in the relationships, not even just with the client, but with uh, resources for your client. So that's really, really awesome. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Well, Laura, let's get right into the lightning round. Are you ready? <laughs> Uh, as ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> what um, was your first job? Oh, my first job was proofreading for um, these newsletters because I was an English literature major and I graduated into a recession. So um, I think the name of the company was Atcom. And they had newsletters like the beer industry and the auto industry. And I, I do think that that sort of gave me a basis for understanding different businesses. Though, frankly, what, what I remember the most is that I had to punch a clock and you had 45 minutes for lunch. And, you know. They don't have so, those anymore. They don't have them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the kindest thing someone ever did for you? Oh, what a, that's an interesting question. The kindest thing. I don't know what's coming to mind um, is frankly thinking about my mother, who was my best, best friend. And I, I guess I think a very kind thing that people can do is, and which my mother always did is just be there to listen and, and to, um, and to call you on your, can I use four letter words? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. You're you good. Your shit. You know, like <laughs> call me on my shit. Like, what? you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it's hard to find people in your life who'll do that. Yeah. That just tell you that everything's okay. Who you trust enough that they, that they can call you out. Yeah. I don't like that. If you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? Oh my God, I know that one, which is really <laughs> crazy. But I hated that my name was Laura. It wasn't a it wasn't a common name. 
I wanted to be Susan for some, like, I imagine that Susan was a tomboy and climbed trees and whatever. I wanted to be Susan when I was in elementary school. I have no idea. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's only funny too, because we were talking about your last name and how, before we got on. So I thought it was funny too. That'd be a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I had an answer. I definitely had <laughs> that one. Do you, are you fresh food or fried food? Uh, fresh food. I'm saying it that way because I love fried food, but I'm, <laughs> I try to be a healthy eater. Don't we all? <laughs> learn? Do you learn by watching or learn by doing? I definitely learn by doing. Same. Which I, I still remember when for many years, I, I didn't fill up my own gas. And my husband always show me like, this is what you do. And I'm like, and then finally, there was like an emergency. I was on a trip, a business trip. I rented a car. I needed to, you know, I finally learned how to do it. Like, I don't really pay that much attention if someone's showing me. I need to do it myself. You want to fill up their own gas tank, you know? Um, <laughs> or Laura, live in New Jersey, yeah. <laughs> yes, Jim. Laura, I'm super excited you got to come on my podcast this time. Um, I'm just excited. Everyone's going to love you. Oh, thank you, Jess. This was fun.